going on guys Jurassic Cast here today we're going to be learning how to set up a rock inside a blender and how to destroy it so there's going to be a couple add-ons that we need to do so you want to head over to the edit tab and go to preferences now here you want to select on the add-ons category here and at the top you want to search for cell make sure you have cell fractures enabled basically this is going to be how you draw to destroy an object and the quickest way to make a rock inside of blender is if you do the landscape mesh mod basically this allows a pre-generated rock for us so now all that is done you want to come over to the default cube click on the delete get rid of it hold shift a go under mesh and you should see a new option for landscape click on landscape this is going to give you just the default one that they have selected here click on the tab at the bottom left and you'll notice operator presets this is where you can select a bunch of different options here we're going to be clicking a rock this time around though so let's just do rock click on g and z that way we can sort of bring it above the x and y axis something sort of like that and that should be good now another thing we want to do is do shift a mesh plane and size by clicking s may as well make this about 15. Click on enter and we're 100 good to go go and hide the plane but we'll use that later on all right, so to use the cell fracture mod, you want to use this annotate pen over here and where it says placement. See how we can sort of just draw in free space. We don't want to accidentally do that. So you want to go under placement and click on surface. That way Blender understands that we're trying to draw on side of the rock itself. If you click zero, this is going to be the camera view. So wherever you want the object to be smashing into is where you want to try to focus most of your accent. So you can literally just draw it however you want to and sort of create whatever shape you want and Blender is going to calculate a whole bunch of different shapes that'll fit your object. All right, so once you're satisfied with your drawing, click on F3. This is going to pull up a quick menu, then type in cell. This is going to get into the cell fracture preset. Now we are going to tweak it just a little bit. So the source limits is how many breaks you want to do. 100 is the default. If you have a beefy system, you can boost this up. We're going to keep it relatively calm since it is going to be quite heavy in our crash. So we'll do about 150. Now recursion is basically going to be so how many times a particle is able to re-break inside of the collision. We'll just set this to one that way it adds a little bit of variability, but not too much. And for the collection, you can name this whatever you want. We'll name this collision, for example. Click on OK here at the bottom. It's going to procedurally generate a cube, and then it's going to squish together and make the object that we're actually self-fracturing. All right, now that is completely done, you'll notice that the blue lines are still here, and if you want to get rid of those, you want to click on the annotate pen. And at the top here where it says notes, you can either hide it by clicking this eyeball, or you can click the minus sign and just getting rid of it. We're done with it, so we won't need to do anything else for now. And then, to work with the collisions a little bit easier, you can click up and down on this arrow. That way you can edit your object. One thing I will say is you might want to hide the original cube or else it's going to look kind of crazy. So let's just hide the original landscape and that's why the lines are sort of all choppy. This is what our object's going to look like. All right, so now that we got everything chopped apart, we're going to make our plane visible again. And if you click play, notice we broke everything apart, but nothing's actually happening. That's because we actually need physics now. So you want to click on this little arrow key that way you're able to select objects again click on any piece and you want to add in a rigid body it's going to be active now the mass is going to be calculated randomly just so you guys are aware now surface response is basically going to be how hard a surface is going to move against each other so if you're wanting something like liquid you would have this lower if you want something more solid object you want to have the friction a little bit higher all right so now that we got the friction set correctly it's only going to be in this one specific crack that we've applied to so far. So the easiest way I found to do this is to hide the plane, hold shift, click and drag over the entire rock. And this is going to select everything inside of our collection. So you can click the drop down arrow if you want to right here and see everything is selected. Click on object and head over to rigid body. And one of the options is going to be copy from active. So see how this one has like the yellow outline that's showing that this is our active object. Rigid body, copy from active. It's going to take a second for everything to calculate. And then if you click on play, it should crumble. Because our entire object is now able to move, though it's going to move in unison. So that is where a plane comes into play. So if you have a plane, click on this bad boy. You want to do rigid body, and it's not moving, so you want to have it as passive. Basically, this is going to act as like a road inside of real life. So now when we click play, it's just going to crumble on top of the plane itself. 
but it's sort of all cracking at the exact same time. So to fix that, hide or plane again, hold shift, drag over the entire object, go into the object tab, go over to rigid body, and there's going to be an option for calculate mass. And then you can pick whatever material that you want. It's all going to be the exact same. Basically, this is going to be for different weights and stuff if you're trying to make it proper. Basically, this is going to be for different weights and everything. So, for example, if you want to do it for silver, going to be the density of silver. So each of these little pieces is going to have their own separate weight. This is also going to determine how much of the physics we're going to need to force this object to crumble. All right, so now all that is applied. You'll notice if clicking on the different pieces are all going to have different kilogram weights. So that means we did it correctly. So if we redo our plane again, click on play, you'll notice that it crumbles. The quick option to play is spacebar if you guys didn't know. And you can also end your frames at about 50 since that's... We don't need the whole 250 for this. But the problem is if you're wanting something to basically crash into this rock, you're going to have to have it wait. So as soon as we start, it's already basically crumbling. To fix that, you want to select a piece of the rock, hide or plane real quick. And underneath the dynamics tab, there's going to be this deactivation. Deactivation basically has it so it waits until something hits an object. So for example, anything with a velocity of 0.4 milliseconds is going to cause the objects to start crumbling. So you want to start your deactivation. Now, just like before, we need to shift, drag to select everything, go to objects, rigid body, copy from active. And the problem by doing this is technically we just overwritten our previous one. So we also need to add in the mask back again. So copy the objective. So to do that again, we need to go to the object. We need to go to rigid body, calculate the mass and click on silver. That way everything has its own unique weights again. So now if we click play, nothing's going to be happening. So the easiest way to do this would be to do shift A, mesh, add in a UV sphere. Now we'll go ahead and drag this up a little bit, scale it down some. Now you can right click and shade smooth if you want to, or you can keep it like the rough shape that it already was. Now the plan here is going to be to have this object interact with it and drive past it. So you want to make sure that it's at least lined up on either an X or Y plane. Click N to open up this little hidden tab menu here. All right, so now if you drag the Y, you notice that it's going to be perfectly going inside the rock here, like a so. You can sort of have it like drop off there. So we'll drag the ball roughly around here. Head back over to frame one. Right click on the location and insert a keyframe. Basically, this is going to be to tell Blender that you want this sphere to be in this exact position on frame one. All right, so now that we got our sphere basically lined up where we want it, so you want to make sure you have this animated option selected. This is going to be to tell Blender that it's not going to be crashing to the ground immediately. It's actually going to have motion to it. All right, so now that we have the sphere where we want it and we have it so animated and selected, we want to move the Y axis and you want to sort of have it click and drag past the rock all the way through it and place it wherever you want to. So in 25 frames, it's going to come from here. Go through the rock and end roughly around here. This is going to be based on the physics of it. So you want to right click and search a keyframe. Now, if you notice, if we play this, it's going to crash through it and just keep on going. But it's not actually going to really change too much of the physics. So at this point, to customize it just a little bit more, we just want to move our keyframes until it looks like it just starts to having a collision. So let's see if we can play around. So on frame 12, for example, it's not there. We're going to have a keyframe for our animated. So right click, insert a keyframe. Then on frame 13, when it actually collisions, you want to turn this animated off. Basically, this is going to be to allow Blender to realize that we want the physics to take back in instead of having the keyframes fully control it. So then it should actually interact with the rock itself. So now if we rewind and play it back, it's going to sort of bounce off like that. For example, if we crank it up to like 3000 pounds, it's going to have a little bit stronger force compared to originally. So that's basically going to be it for how to have an object crash into each other inside of Blender. 
We are going to be going over the textures in a later video, but I figured since it's going to balloon out this video for an extra 10, 15 minutes on that stuff, it'd be better on its own separate thing. One thing to add before we end off today's video, if you go into the render area, you might see that your original landscape is actually shown right now. So you can either do two options. You can delete it or you can head over to the very top here where there is going to be this little beaker upside down. Click on it and you'll notice a couple different options here. One of the ones with the camera is going to be for your disabled renders. Make sure you have that selected and then come over to your landscape and unselect it. Landscape is no longer going to be showing inside of the rendered view. So it'll be playing just like our original stuff is. And by the way, whenever you're done, make sure you click on zero to go into your camera view. And that's how you know what it's going to look like inside of the render space. So if this tutorial helped, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.